Running Sentences presents Wasteland City, A Tale of Lost Memories Part 4 X's Adventure The young man, known as X, finds himself released from police custody. Unsure of what to do, he finds himself wandering the city and on a bit of an unwanted adventure. This is a work of fiction. Names, characters, businesses, events, and incidences are products of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to actual people living dead or actual events is purely coincidental. Copyright 2021. Michael Henry. All rights reserved. Detective Frederick and Malik sat at a table across from X. The interrogation room lights were on high to make the place uncomfortable. They were each glaring at him as if doing so would get an answer out of him. X did his best to sit still, but the chair felt like it was intentionally made to tilt to one side, so he continually shuffled over to the other, only to make that side feel like it was tilting, and so he would shift back and forth and back and forth. Malik leaned forward, stopping X's little journey of flipping from side to side. Listen, all we want to know is the truth. The other detective, Frederick, leaned forward as Malik leaned backwards, training spots. Or oh, you can tell us why you're prancing around as Cosa Bonaparte. Give us that piece of information, we will let you go with a fine and sharp reminder not to ever do it again. Case closed, we move on, you move on. Everyone aside from the real Corsair is happy, to an extent. I'm sorry, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know anything about this man or that you say I am. Then just say you're him and pay the fine. But I, I don't have any money and I, I don't want to be anyone but myself. Malik's fist hit the table between them. We don't care about what you want. Frederick reached across to his fellow detective to restrain the man. and Malik, however, was having none of this and jumped up from his chair. He seemed to be unable to control his anger, with his face turning red, but no words coming out as he waved his finger in front of X. Frederick also rose from his chair and gently grabbed a hold of the, his fellow detective and, and began leading him away by kicking aside Malik's ticked over chair. The two soon left the room though on their way out failed to close the door. Once they were gone and curious about what was going on, X stood up and crept closer to the open door. Not that he needed to, as the voices were loud and clear from outside. What are we going to do with him? We can't keep him and charge him. Any judge with their salt will say we don't have enough evidence. I don't know, but whatever it is, we have to do it quickly. They fall silent a second later as the click of steps echoed into the interrogation room. It soon stopped at what X judged to be not far from the room. Chief, has your suspect confessed? He refused to acknowledge that he is a fake corsair. I see. It's time for a new tactic, then. The conversation went quiet so that X couldn't hear, and deciding that he didn't want to get caught near the door, he hurried back to his seat. A few seconds later, the door fully opened and in strolled Ugly McGee. Well, Mr. Fake Corsair, it seems you'll soon be free to go unless you wish to say something. X, confused by what was going on, simply shook his head. To this, Ugly could only sigh and step to the side, revealing the doorway. Then please leave the station at once. Not waiting around, X rose and hurried out of the room. With haste, X made his way through the police station and out onto the main road. He found himself standing there looking around with the afternoon sun beating down on him. A glance to his left and then right revealed no great secrets and for a second he was at a loss. What am I to do? Where is Mustang or anyone? He looked around a bit more, then proceeded to head down the road towards the lower section of town. He kept heading downwards until he found himself in between section of the, of the middle and the lower parts of town. Lost and confused, he found himself wandering down a side road to see what was going on. 
Mustang, meanwhile, tried to keep his composure, but his jaw kept wanting to drop in surprise. He tried his best to fight that while also trying to keep his composure. Moneypenny, however, was unperturbed by this and leaned over her counter to the two ladies. The larger, older lady looked ready to swing her cane around if she didn't get a pleasing answer. I'm sorry, who is your son? Corsair Bonaparte. Oh, well, he isn't here, ma'am. Katrina stepped around from behind the older lady and put her hands on her hips, and then pointed at Mustang. That man's note said he'd be here. Uh, did it say that, or did it say that there would be information here? It said that he'd be here. Ah, yes, well, he's either in jail or he's at the police station trying to report that someone is impersonating him. Either or. Why would he be in jail? Impersonation? Mustang just said that? Yes, as my friend Alex here said, if he's the same person we are both thinking of, well, then he was attacked and lost his memory, and potentially someone is claiming to be him to pin him for impersonation or something. We don't really know what's going on yet. This sounds all made up. Like they know where our precious Corsair is. Well, I do. On, on the second thought, I might know where he is, but uh, uh, maybe. If we're, again, if we're thinking of the same person, then he's potentially at the jail cell. But we might not even be talking about the same person. The young man I know has brown hair, green eyes, and is mostly skinny, but in a fit way. That sounds very much like my Corsair. Then you ought to run over to the police station to stop all the madness of him being arrested, shouldn't you, Miss Whatever Your Name Is? Eleanor stepped forward for a second, looking rather conflicted on the whole matter. Katrina, however, put her hand on Eleanor to comfort her. Why don't you head back to the house, Eleanor? I, on the other hand, shall go see if what this man says is true. I will go rescue your lovely son, Corsair, and my fiancé will forever be saved. Yes, please, yes, yes, do that. I don't think I could stand seeing my boy in a jail uniform. She began fanning herself furiously. It would be such a cruel treatment of someone who only has the best of hearts. The older lady had turned and was beginning to head out of the shop, then in a quick savage move turned around and whacked Mustang with her cane. That's for getting my son arrested, potentially. She then stormed out of the bookstore, leaving Katrina, who was glaring at the lot of them. Uh, perhaps I should come with you? Katrina's glare, however, concentrated on him, and he stopped his words. She, too, then departed without further word, and the trio were left alone once again. It was Alex who came along Mustang and was the first to get something out. That was very odd. Yes, it was very suspicious, and I think I need to tell them to see that things are as they should be. Plus, I have to stop by the mayor's office anyway. You too, he pointed towards them. No fighting, even if it is in self-defense, training, or otherwise. Mustang glanced between the two of them to make sure that they understood, though neither seemed particularly to care. He waited a further second or two and let the ladies get further down the road, and then ran out after them. X, on the other hand, was wandering down the back alleyways and roads, looking for any semblance of direction. But, with each step, he felt himself more and more lost. The strangers around him seemed all dirty and grimy, with none of them reminding him of Mustang. The feeling of loneliness had crept up on him as he leaned against a nearby wall. Figures walked past, and he didn't even bother paying attention anymore. A pair of feet stopped next to him, and his head was yanked up to stare into the eyes of a man with crazed white hair. Aha! I have found you! Ever since Mustang brought you into my practice, I thought something was funny. Come with me this instant! Dr. Von Klomp grabbed the confused X by the arm and proceeded to pull him down the road. The doctor led X through a confusing, winding mound of back alleys and roads until they arrived in the main road. Once there, though, they did not stop, and Von Klomp 
continued to drag X down the road headed towards the lower section of town. Um, I... where are we going? X furiously was trying to disentangle himself from the doctor, but there seemed to be no getting out of that grip despite the old man's look. My shop. It's a safe place for people like you who need to be locked up. I don't need to be locked up. People with memory loss always need to be locked up for safety in case they decide to act out. We can't have you doing that. No, Mustang was right to bring you to me. Despite X's tries, he still couldn't free himself from the old doctor's grip and his arm, and he found himself headed further down the main road into the lower section of the city. On the upper side of the city, towards the wall, Mustang had tailed the two ladies from the bookshop. They had gone up to the wall where the young lady and the old lady had parted ways, and Mustang regretted that he was the only one following them to see that where they were going, as they were now split up, and it would be harder to track what was going on. But it was the way things were, and the, as the young lady turned and headed straight for the nearby police station, Mustang, of course, dutifully followed. She entered the station, and he waited, watching to see what would happen. It was, however, not her who would would catch his interest and attention, but rather Mr. Douglas, the mayor's personal assistant, coming out of the station that did. The assistant walked down the stairs of the station and onto the street, and seemingly noticed him right away and headed straight across to him. Well, Mr. Mustang, the mayor expects results. What have you learned so far? To this, Mustang checked his pockets until he came out with the vial and held it in front of Douglas. This vial is reportedly filled with the new drug coming into town. Don't ask me how I got a hold of it, as it's complicated, and I don't want to give away my sources. But this is what the mayor is after, isn't it? Douglas snatched the vial away and tucked it into one of his pockets while throwing glances around. That will do for now, but we expect more and a full breakdown of what's going on. With that, the man shot off down the road, headed back towards the mayor's office. Mustang returned to watching the police station with the hope that the young woman hadn't left while he was looking away, or that she hadn't taken the back exit out of the place. He settled into a spot to watch. The doctor having led X down into the dirty side of the city, and down the road many, many steps, the doctor had led X into a small, dark shack. Von Klomp had finally let go of his arm and pushed him deeper into the place. A small lamp near on a nearby wall offered some light as it pointed its way down a hallway. Head down the hallway to the door, you. You will find what you need in there. We will get you situated into a great situation. X glanced behind him to see that Von Klomp was just standing in the way behind him, and he wasn't about to get around. He didn't think he could weasel his way past anyway, with brute strength the old man had presented in just gripping his arm. With that settled in his head, he headed down the hallway towards the door at the end, the footsteps of Von Klomp a few feet behind him, reminding him that that there was no getting away. They soon arrived at the door, which Axe opened and peered into, trying to get a feel for the dark space behind it. To the young man's surprise, he felt something hit his butt heavily and propelled him into the room. The door was soon slapped shut behind him, and the faint sound of a click and the old slack of a door perhaps locking, and X couldn't be totally sure, sounded. As he got up in the dark room, he found his way back to the door and did find that it was in fact locked, so that he took to wandering about the room, trying to find his way about, but he kept bumping into the sharp edges of boxes. With limited light inside, he did he found something to sit on and plopped down on a box to wait. This only lasted for a few seconds as off in the corner some light came shining in. Caught off guard, X jumped up from his seat and swiveled to find the source. The corner of the room was lit up and he found his way through the maze of boxes towards it. There he found some planks that had made up the wall and been pulled away in a secret passage. He glanced around, hoping that the doctor wasn't going to burst through the door, and then decided it was safe enough for him to head through this passage. On the other hand, Mustang had taken up much of his afternoon tiredly staring at the front of the police station. 
The young woman, who had appeared in the bookshop, had not reappeared in the front of the police station. He had started to wonder if she was ever going to come out or that he'd zoned out and completely missed her walking away. A tug at his elbow distracted him and he glanced over. A smallish police officer was glancing around nervously. Pardon me, Mustang, but I thought you'd like to know that something was up. What is up? We released the fake cursor Bonaparte not long after you left. I was one of the ones assigned to keeping tabs on him to see what would happen. Something happened? Well, we lost him in the lower city. He was there and then he was gone. Tried to locate him again, but it's a maze of streets down there and one wrong turn sends you down three other wrong ways. Where, exactly? The maze. The maze on the back streets just before the Mustang took off down the main road towards the lower section of the town. One X emerged from the dark inside of the shack, hastily deposited into the bright sunny day. Except that the back road he found himself on only had the reflection of lights coming from carefully placed mirrors, sending and spreading light about the place. He blinked as his eyes adjusted to the highly lit up road. It was also a nice looking little established spot. A hand roughly clapped against his back and he sprang forward a few feet surprised and carefully tried to avoid running into any mirrors. Welcome to the market, where you can get whatever you want. Is this your first time here? I, I, I don't even know where I am. How did you get here then? X merely pointed towards the shack wall with a hole near the ground. The woman raised her eyebrows and she looked down onto it. I think there's something very wrong here. Let's hurry up. She sashayed her way a few steps away and then came to a stop when she realized that X hadn't instantly followed her. Hurry along, mister. We don't want to get caught by the people who own that storage facility. X nodded and the two set off down towards the market itself. They exited through a doorway and found themselves in a long alleyway where the black market lined the back road with stalls on each side. Many had colorful and wonderful looking objects that they were trying to sell or hawk. X found himself staring at the odds and ends with each seller standing in front of their little stall shops. The street was busy with all of the dirty lower class looking for bargains. Goods for sale, fresh goods from other cities, knock off prices, but real goods. The woman, however, grabbed his arm and pulled him along. They hardly passed the many stalls until they arrived at a building with five doors in the back of it. She chose the middle door and entered. The lady had brought X into a bar, but once again did not stop as she headed through the semi-busy bar. A few stalls were set up here and there, and though most people seemed to ignore the sellers and the products. Instead, they were more into whatever it was that they were drinking. X did his best to keep up as she made her way over to the back wall. There, she gently knocked on a pattern of one, two, one, three knocks. The wall came apart at the seam and soon turned into a doorway. She stepped through, but X held back, feeling like the whole thing was weirdly off, and that Everyone was staring at him. He looked about, but no one noticed or cared about the sudden door. Her head poked back through the door as she looked at him inquisitively. This won't lead into anything bad, trust me. Axe didn't move, and she came back out of the secret passageway to try and grab his arm. He, however, jumped back. He turned to flee, but found his way blocked by two dirty people with rather pointy-looking knives. But these knives were too long to be knives, and Axe also ruled out bayonets, which would believe them to be a cleaver or a machete, neither of which he was happy with the thought of, and he didn't want them pointed into him either. He turned once again to see the woman was heading for the door. This time, he followed her. As they passed the secret door they into the back passage, the woman came to a stop to look at him. Um, what? Just a quick question. Did you find the shack and the passage all on your own, or were you helped there? He was helped. Come along, Mr. X, or Mustang's friend, or whatever you want to call yourself, or perhaps you go by Corsair. The door behind them slid shut, and X found himself being pushed to the side as Lucian slid past him, having come in through the same doorway that they just entered. The boss seemed uninterested in standing around and headed off down the hallway towards the far end, which was shut off by another door. The woman grabbed X to follow Lucius and they 
he dutifully followed behind. In the next room, Lucius had led them into a storage room that sat next to a case which had been lit up by lanterns. Burnt into the case were the words, For testing purposes only, Barrier City. Lucius pointed towards the words as he looked at X. We've been getting more and more of these cases in. Do you know what they are? No, I've never seen them before. What are they? Hmm, either you are or aren't an agent for the dealers out of Barrier City who are bringing in these drugs. But your brain might have been beamed a bit too hard by whoever you pissed off. Do you remember anything, Mr. X? I don't know anything about myself, but I think there are two Corsair Bonapartes, and I might be one of them, or I might not be. I guess yes, that about lines with the way things are going. Now the only thing to do is find out how you found us. A doctor brought me to a shack, and I found a shack, a storage facility, this lady called it, um, and then stuffed me into the back room of it, and uh, I found my way through a dark passageway and crawled out a bottom hole and suddenly found myself in the market. I was trying to escape from this long clomp, but I, I didn't know I was coming into it. You're sure it was that doctor? Um, it, I think it was Von Klomp. I, I can't. It's all fuzzy. But yeah. Lucius looked over X sharply for a second and then shrugged. Well then, I guess it's time to get you back to Mustang. Something isn't right and he's your best bet to figuring out what's going on. With a wave of his hand, Lucius signaled that they should head for the door. He was no longer interested in X, and the woman grabbed a hold of X and pulled him out. Night cast a pale light over the lower city, the moon having only semi-risen and was not in its full shape. Mustang had hurried as best as he could down the lower section of the city. Unfortunately, a tangle of traffic of carts and people had stopped him from getting there before nightfall. Now, on the barely lit roads, he found himself lost, even though it was the main road. What the fuck am I doing? Why am I... Ah! He turned and looked around once more. There was no sign of X, and he snorted at himself for thinking that the man would just pop up. With a sigh and a realization that standing around wasn't going to do much, he pressed onwards down the road with the thought that the underground might just be the spot to look. The woman, on the other hand, had led X from the bar to the back alleyway, and then beyond that to the back rooms. She moved quickly, not wasting time or talking, and X did his best to keep up as they rushed about. I, excuse me, miss, but where are we going? Downward. And you can call me Zero, by the way. Down? Oh, you'll see. They proceeded further down the road, with Zero seemingly paying more attention to where she was going than before. They soon, however, arrived at a dead end of a road, though Zero looked very pleased with the situation. This left X glancing further around trying to understand what was going on or if this was going to be the end of him. She, however, was busy reaching down and picked up a metal grate. With some effort, she managed to move it off to the side. Down we go. X paused as he looked at the barely lit sewer tunnel and then back at her. Uh, it's fine. Nothing will happen. We're going down to go back up. It's just a route around. Plus, the way is lit despite the way it looks. I'll even go down first if that makes you happy. With that, she hopped down the hole and disappeared from view. X continued to him and haw at the chance that something was wrong, and he couldn't help shake the feeling that it was all too dangerous to just follow people around. However, as he glanced around him to see the mostly empty road and no way of knowing how to get out of the back roads, he decided that a hole might be his best option. When he turned to look back at the hole in the ground, he saw Zero peeking at him. With a shake of his head, he headed towards it. You shouldn't peek out at people like that. It's very odd, odd and off-putting. She got out of the way, and he, he jumped down. The interior of the sewer tunnel was lit, true to Zero's word. They sloshed their way down the tunnel corridor with a sting of lights leading them downward as Chad X nervous. He was thankful that the water wasn't deep. In fact, it was more of an itty-bitty stream that trickled past, that trickled between collecting puddles. 
the puddles being where most of, not all of the sloshing water came from each step. And then with each step he found this tunnel getting lighter and lighter, with fewer lanterns hung up to light the way. They continued their journey in silence until they reached the end of the tunnel, where suddenly Zero disappeared from view. In his rush to try and find X, Mustang had headed downward without much of an objective to figure out how or where to find him. He'd simply thought that if he put his nose to the grindstone, he'd come across him. After all, how hard could it be to find a man with no memories? A question he'd learned that probably shouldn't be asked, since he couldn't find him. What he'd found was at the plaza entrance to the city itself. It was a wandering around Dr. Von Klomp who hadn't noticed him. Curiosity got the better of him as he watched the old doctor yelp out a name. Corsair, are you there? I know you escaped my clutches, but I really am here to help you out. The doctor disappeared down a dark alleyway, and Mustang, curiously, followed. X emerged from the tunnel looking for Zero. The bright light at the end of the tunnel blinded X as he tried to step out and look shading his eyes as he jumped down to the walkway below, or at least what he hoped was something of a walkway below. He landed with a thump, and once he could see again, looked about to where he was and blinked, then blinked again to make sure that the sight of an underground city resting on walkways above the water gushing from the sewer pipes was real. It all led to a tiny but large structure on the walkways above a waterfall heading further down the cavern. He stared at the sight of it all, as Zero waved him over, she having walked away a small distance along the walkways. He then started to follow around as she kept walking ahead of him. This underground city was much like a bigger version of the black market, but one that never seemed to rest. The people were in constant movement as they were afraid the structure would suddenly decide to come falling down. Axe had made his way carefully past several precarious buildings and walkways that looked like he could barely hold more than one person at a time. He kept his wits about him until he saw Zero come to a stop at the end of the city. Here he saw that the waterfall was headed down into the cavern below. It was here that Zero decided to sit down at the veranda overlooking the waterfall as it headed deeper into the cavern below. She was sitting against the fencing that marked the edge of the veranda and where the little city, sitting on stilts above the water, sat. She signaled for X to join her, and he slowly came over, studying the city behind him. What are we doing here? I thought we were heading back up. In order for you to go back up, it's easier to wait a few minutes. You'll see. And so he sat down to see. Mustang had continued to tail the doctor, looking for what the man was up to. After all, he'd kept calling out for Corsair or X, but no one came out of hiding. They continued along this route, winding through the back streets until Von Klomp managed to reach one of the many dead ends. Cornered, Mustang finally had enough and stepped out onto the road, which held the doctor. Doctor, what are you doing? Klomp spun about, and upon spotting Mustang, bolted to a nearby door and threw it. Not wasting a second, Mustang took off after him. The duo raced through a variety of ramshackle buildings, doing their best to dodge and avoid people and furniture that was in the way. They also contended with the building's rubble that had been left where it fell. Doc was quite agile for his age, deftly moving from building to building, all while seemingly not breaking a sweat. Mustang did his best to keep up, but the energy level just seemed to be too different as he fell further behind the old Doc. Soon, Von Klomp was gone from sight as Mustang spilled out into a side alleyway looking this way and that for the man, but he was nowhere in sight. How the old doc had so much energy to outrun him was something that disturbed him as Von Klomp had often complained of aches and pains in his knees. Mustang stopped to collect his breath and carefully looked around. The first spot his eyes wandered to was a sandy dirt ground but they had too many footprints dancing around the ground to give him any clues. He then looked both ways down the alleyway and headed off towards the left. With the dock gone, it was best he figured to get back to finding Axe himself. Doing his best to regain his sense of direction, he walked and walked, 
Only this wound up with him at a dead-end road, and with the mountain of the city hanging out just behind it. He turned around and for the first time noticed the gash in the building to his right, revealing a sewer pipe. How did I get here? He shook his head, already knowing the answer to that, and, and frustrated that he had not actually been paying attention to his surroundings. He headed straight for the gash in the wall hoping that the pipe would be big enough to let him drop down. If there was one thing that the sewers were good for, it was going downwards and removing the problem of a maze of roads that had grown up on top of this mountain. He found the spot and pulled open the hatchway door and found himself dropped down into the sewer below. When he got into the sewer, he hurried down the pipe, these ones being barely lit pipelines. He didn't want to stay too long in the dark as someone might be hiding. It soon joined into a slightly lighter tunnel where he could see that the water was a bit deeper and that he'd like. And he scurried along the side of the tunnel doing his best to go towards the light further down the way. When he finally emerged from the tunnels, a little less clean had survived the whole ordeal. He clambered out from the tunnel down to the walkway and stared at the underground city. It had been a year or more since he'd been down here. He wandered around the walkway, keeping an eye out as the citizens all eyed him just as suspiciously. He stuck out his tongue at one or two that hissed at him, and then he, then he came to a stop questioning why he'd come to this section of the city when all he needed were the tunnels. But then pressed forward, thinking that maybe Lucius could be around here somewhere. After all, the main drug supplier loved to hang out around the waterfall, and he pushed his way forward, searching for that or anything. X, having gotten bored of sitting around waiting for something to happen, stood up. It was then that he noticed Dr. Von Klump and sat back down, trying not to be noticed. He edged his way over to Zero, who was seemingly half asleep. Wake up, Zero! Wake up, Zero! She sat up with a start. What? Huh? What? Something? We need to get out of here. Why? The doctor who threw me into that building that I escaped from is here. That's no reason to hurry off. We're better off waiting for... X, however, was hearing none of this as he rapidly began to crawl away. Zero watched him as he crawled, shrugged, and then sat back quickly, giving in to the half-asleep state she'd previously been in. Mustang did his best to try and get up to the overlook, but the crowd seemed thicker today than when he'd previously been here. Every step forward seemed to take two steps backwards, and he was surprised that he wasn't already being thrown back into the pipe to leave by the citizens. As he fought his way forward, a hand grabbed him and helped him along. Surprised, he glanced over to barely make out Alex. Alex, what are you doing here? Work. And you haven't come around to update me on what's going on, as promised? It's complicated, and I have yet to learn much other than two people are prancing around the city with potentially the same name, and they're looking into drugs. Or one might be using the same name to bring drugs. I don't know. Hmm, sounds complicated. Yeah, that's the, the least of my problems. Alex fell silent for a second as they continued on their quest to conquer another thin walkway hanging over the pond of sewer water that collected below, and then would shoot off down towards the waterfall. What are you doing here? I was tracking Doc Klopp, but lost him, and then got lost, and I figured I was going down was the best way to go back up. Then I figured that I might as well see if Lucius is here and talk to him further. He'll be at the Overlook. Mustang shook his head because he already knew this, and then went quiet as there was nothing more to say as they concentrated more and more on getting through the thick crowds that didn't want them there. X did his best to crawl along unseen, but with the gathering crowd, who seemed to be excited about something, did little to let him crawl about their feet. Giving up on this, he stood up and found himself not far from the doctor. He ducked back down and pushed his way through the crowd. Across the walkway, Mustang and Alex had pushed their way into one of Lucius's many operating base buildings, which was the last building before the Overlook appeared. It was a ramshackle place with metal boards that seemed to be welded in place. The interior of the building contained little other than a collection of men and women, who all seemed to be elsewhere in their looks and gazes. 
Mustang and Alex pushed their way past this group and headed for the stairs to the second floor. Having gotten up there and passed the crowd, they found Lucius's guards standing about the place, huddling towards the balcony that looked out over the overlook of the waterfall. Hey, is Lucius here? The guards ignored him as a microphone of some sort started blasting out a noise. Ahem! Sorry about that. I've called a meeting here today of you kind citizens because we are faced with a great situation. We might fall victim to the same plague and situation that has hit other cities. I don't want to see that. The crowd below the balcony had all stopped and stared except for Alex, who now found himself being brought to a stop by the sludge of masses. He looked about as they all stared up at the balcony which Lucius stood on. He stood up for a second and glanced about when a hand grabbed his arm. Without turning around to see what was going on, he yanked it away and pushed towards the building with all his might. He managed to get past a few people before a hand reached out again and then just brushing past his arm. Doing his best, he juked to his right and left, dodging his way closer and closer to the building. We must find and reject these new drugs for the betterment of our society. We are not opposed to drug usage. We appreciate it and understand that it has its course. But this new stuff, this new stuff takes away your mind and I don't want that for my people. Mustang had managed to push his way onto the balcony followed by Alex. He found Lucius standing there in front of a bullhorn, acting much like a preacher. Lucius, what are you doing? Must think, Alex, what are you two doing here? A shout of pain drew their attention from the crowd below. Ow, ow, ow! Mustang! Von Klomp is here! X, who's that with you? I don't know! Mustang, without a single thought of what would happen to him, jumped over the edge of the balcony towards the veranda below. Alex, behind him, rolled her eyes and turned and headed for the stairs. X, try as he might, could not get away from the man chasing him, who was not Von Klopp, at least from what he could tell. They cut their way through the crowd towards the edge of the veranda, with the man's grasp firmly on him. Who are you and what do you want? I want you to disappear forever. Von Klopp joined them at the edge, the crowd watching the situation unfold as the man pushed X towards the teetering edge. A gun cracked and fired. The doctor staggered about as Zero suddenly emerged. I have been shot. Dr. Von Klopp, you are wanted for association with this new drug as an importer. The man holding X looks about surprised that Klopp had been shot and that the situation was, was going abnormal. Then, with a mighty push, sent the young man over the edge. The crowd gathered to watch as X splashed down into the swirling waters of the waterfall below, then yet sucked down a pipe leading away. The man then also jumped over the railing and soon was gone. Mustang took a few seconds to manage to break through the crowd, looking around for X and the man who had grabbed him. A kind citizen of the underground merely pointed down to the waterfall below, and he at once jumped down. Mustang found himself in a pond of a waterfall, but being moved quickly by the current towards the draining tunnels. He swore he heard another splash in the water, but was merely plunged into darkness as the water pulled him away towards the underground. These tunnels were just big enough for a human to fit through, and he was soon traveling at high speeds through the twisted passages, pushing him about, but they barely let him breathe as the rush of water filled most of them except for a few spots here and there. There were a few small gaps where the water relaxed enough to let him gasp a little bit of air. Time seemed lost as he was pulled along and then suddenly spit out into fresh, clean air. Even though he was able to now breathe, the water continued to push him as the tunnel turned into a river as it exited near the far side of the base mountain. The city of Wasteland seemingly a few miles away from where he'd managed to drag his soaking body from the water to the shoreline. He stood there, soaking for a second, trying to look around when the sound of a cry came from the river. Mustang! He spotted Alex coming down the river and waded back into it to grab her arm. His hand barely managed to make it in time as he grabbed her and then pulled her towards the shore. She came out of the water much like he did, 
looking like a partially drowned human being who was not terribly happy with life. Why did you jump in? Because you did. Where's X? I don't know. I I haven't had a chance to look around yet. He pointed towards a little hill of dirt that was across the river and was provided a good sight line, he figured. Perhaps if we could get up there and we can see something, anything, to help us. Alex looked at the rushing water of the river. She wasn't entirely convinced, apparently. Um, Mustang, however, cared not as he waded into it and then rushed uh, as best he could across the 50-foot width of it, though he questioned if it made it a river or something smaller. But since the water started pushing him, he let the thought go as he swam as fast as he could to the other side. He soon was there and began trudging his path upward. Exhausted, he managed to get to the top of the hill and looked around. His gaze fell towards a stream on the other side, and it was also a part of the waterway system that dumped sewer water away from the city. There, he spotted two figures, one was exhaustively trying to crawl away, the other held a gun, and it was pointed at the crawling figure. Hey, stop that! The words echoed down to the two figures. In a split second, the one with the gun had turned to look at him and then raised his gun and fired. Down at the mouth of the stream, the man turned back to X, who had given up on crawling away. Oh good, you've finally come to your senses then. X flopped over and then slowly and steadily tried to stand up. He managed to get up and standing up straight and looking at the man in the eyes. Before I die, I want to at least know your name. That's too bad. I don't feel like giving you anything at all. X looked at the man, trying to find something else to look at while the man shot him. His eyes settled on a dust cloud that was rapidly approaching. He squinted and stared. Either it was a mirage of some sort coming across the grasslands in a hurry of dust or just his imagination. The man noticed his stare and looked. X didn't bother to take the chance to move, as it was probably just a mirage that kept getting closer and closer. What is that? Oh, it's real? Yes, it's very real. We're both seeing it. The dust cloud continued to approach, and then two clouds broke free from the dust and came hurtling towards them. A minute passed as they both watched and the carriages approached, and then they came to a stop right in front of them. The door to the front carriage popped open, but no one came out. Both took a few steps towards it, wondering what was going on. Who are you and what do you want? No response came from the inside the carriage. Um, hello, X offered. If someone doesn't come out here, I will shoot this carriage. The man made sure his gun was cocked and pointed it towards it. The carriage driver then turned from his position and pointed his own gun down at the man. Or maybe I won't shoot, um, but tell me, driver, what's going on? A lady expressed her interest in you getting into the carriage and the gentleman next to you getting into the other carriage. X raised his arm and looked confused as he looked to the driver. Um, do I have a say in this, and why am I doing this? Yes, why are we doing this? Because, sir, it is in your best interest. The man recoiled at the sound of the woman's voice. He then stuffed his pistol away in his holster and scurried aboard. X, on the other hand, stood his ground. This he did mostly because he didn't know what was going on, and he blankly looked at the carriage driver who had tucked away their gun. If you would, sir, please get in the other carriage. Um, what do I do if I refuse? The man behind you will knock you out. X spun around to find a mean-looking man with a large club in his hands, and he was also practicing taking a few harsh swings with it. The man saw X and gave him a grin, the one which had few teeth. Seeing this, X decided that he didn't want to lose his memory again, or his brain, considering how harsh those swings were, turned and sprinted over to the other carriage, quickly getting aboard. End of part four. Thank you for listening.